Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. We have a fabulous show today, uh, but I'm going to introduce it in a very different way. Who loves politicians? Who loves what they do? Who loves what they say? Do we believe them? Do we, do we really think they're out for our best interests? Are they all just paid by the lobbyists and uh, everything you're reading in national politics and our local politics here in Hawaii? Well, I have to tell you, I fell in love with one guy who I honestly believe is out to help his community, to help our state and to help our country. So I want to introduce you to a young man, Bob, if I may call you a young man, um, Mr. Bob McDermott, who is a state representative for EVA. Am I correct? You, you're very correct. You're very humbling. You've humbled me greatly. Seymour, I'm not so young. I'm 54. You're a baby. <laughs> you could be my kid. What your folks don't know is we were just talking before we went on, and we, we met each other very casually and informally in 1987 at yeah. the YMCA. Yeah. You were talking to Mufi, and I was a young college kid, uh, but I was in the men's club because they had the steam room and everything else, and I wanted to take advantage of that. Wait a sec, you didn't have any money for the <laughs> men's club. It was 30 club. bucks a month. 30 bucks a month, right? And it was, and you know, that's all I could afford, and uh, and I remember you talking to Mufi, and, and so I said, Seymour, I know Seymour, and, and boom, just here, this must have been 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah. And Mufi Hanneman is our ex-mayor. Yes. And he is the one who propelled the rail into yes. a reality here in the yes. state. And we're going to talk about that. But Bob, uh, I want people to know a little bit about you. What Seymour's World is about is facilitating conversations and opening minds. Sure. And one thing I find in politics today, especially today, I mean, every single day we have the most negative, negative view of politicians, mainly because the press really wants to uh, to present a negative view. And we need to clean that up a little bit. I think so. And when I look at you and I think about what you've done and I read about all of the, the history that you have, not just in politics, but your personal history, I want people to see that. I want people to know the Bob McDermott who may be our next governor in this state. Well, well I sure hope so. But, you know, one of, came to Hawaii in 1982 as uh, a young Marine 100 pounds ago. I don't measure it in years. I, Went, matriculated out of the Marine Corps to Chaminade. Uh, while I was there, I met my wife, who really changed my life. Beautiful Samoan girl. Uh, and they told me, you know, if you, you look, look at me. I'm not the handsomest guy ever. I'm no George Clooney, let's just say that. And I got this beautiful Samoan girl. And they said, you know, you marry her, you marry the family. Oh, oh I don't care about that. Oh, 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 oh. I, got, I got a 10 here. And sure enough, you do marry the family. And what a blessing it's been because they've transformed me uh, to be the, the, the qualities that the Polynesian people have, the best of their qualities, the sharing, the giving. You know, I was a little selfish when I was younger, so kind of the way uh, East Coast kids maybe raised, I don't know. But this spirit of Ohana and family, boy, you marry Samoan, you really live it. Um, <clears throat> we have eight children. What people don't know, and I really don't like to talk about too much, but we adopted five of them. I know that. Three of them are ours. Uh, they're all ours. I love them all dearly. Uh, but it was a God thing how it unfolded. We didn't plan on it. One was her cousin who needed a home, so we denied him and adopted him. And then there was a sibling group, uh, and the children were half Samoan, so we went and got them. But Samoan children are never available because the Samoan families take them. For some reason, these children were... And, uh, of course, drugs were involved, and uh, the two youngest ones had a speech impediment, severe speech impediments. Uh, the one didn't sp utter any words till they were two, and the other one, it was like talking to Lassie until she was about five or six. Wow. Uh, so that is the most important thing I've ever done, and the greatest blessing and the most joy I ever got, still to this day, is from those children. And Bob, those kids, you know, we have two adopted children as well. You know that. Yeah, my son and my daughter. They're both. So you know, there's yes, no difference. Yes, of course. It's a, it is a blessing. Uh, what you in 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 Jewish we call it a mitzvah. A mitzvah is when you do something that you can't get paid for. 
It's something that is so godlike, so something that you get back. Well, you're a mensch. Yes, I am. <laughs> you are, well, I, I think I'm a mensch. Dave Livingston called me a mensch. Dave he was on the show a just a couple of weeks ago. Dave he is a mensch as well. Yeah. And I think uh, that's part of why I'm so impressed by your history and what, what your, your uh, passions are and what you want to do. And I think it's important for people to understand that politicians have one side that they show to the public, one side that the press wants them to see, and the real side, which is them. Yeah, it's, you know, all you get on the news is a soundbite, right? So you don't, and it's, and the only time you get all is a very, in the heat of a very controversial issue, whether it's same-sex marriage, the train, et cetera, et cetera. You, you talk about the rail for a moment. There was a poll done recently, PRP did a poll, and they only showed it to Democrat leadership. It wasn't made public, but it shows that 60% of the people want the thing completed to Al Uh About 60%, maybe more, are unhappy the way the project has been conducted, which is understandable uh, with all the negative press. Um, but you, out of that 60%, probably 95% of them are Republicans. So to be a Republican who supports the train, I get a lot of people calling me, uh, well, in my own party, a rhino, a traitor, this and that. It's the only tax I've ever voted for. And I came in after it was started. And it's like, well, what are the options? But Bob, what is the, you know, the, the, the issue behind being a Republican doesn't mean that you have to be totally in line with what the party is saying because right. you lose your objectivity. Well, yeah. And I live in Ever Beach, which is ground zero. So I walk, I didn't make this decision in a vacuum. I walk every block of that neighborhood. And in every neighbor, every street, there's a pickup truck with a set of tools in it. Whether it's a carpenter, a glazer, a mason, whatever. These guys are construction workers. Mm -hmm. They live in Ever Beach. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that when this thing is done, there'll be a blizzard of economic activity, construction, redevelopment along Kalihi, Waipahu, the, the poo-poos. If you go in Waipahu, the train runs right past this area called the poo-poos. Uh, it's like a ghetto. That will be raised, and they'll put new high-rises up where young families can go and buy a condominium and build equity. So someday, if they want to move to a dream home, they can. But in the meantime, they can start with something small. You're right. Bob, you also were in Iraq. You served in Iraq, right? Uh, actually... You were in Desert Storm? The Desert Storm, yeah. Okay. This is the first Gulf War, which is more like Desert Roundup uh, compared to... What, what did you learn from that, Bob? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. The one memory that comes back to me is, and I don't know how relevant it is, is the... As they would maintain the guard post, you know, the Marines would be with the machine gun M16, and the Saudi Arabia guys who we partnered with would literally be sitting on a uh, blanket drinking tea. It wasn't serious for them. Uh, I didn't fire my weapon. I, I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't in any danger uh, other than, you know, we had scuds coming in, but uh, we had shelters. We'd run to the shelter. I still remember one of my uh, <laughs> typical lieutenant. <laughs> Scud, Scud, so we're all running to the shelter. Sure. I run in, hit my head on the, the beam, my helmet flies off. <laughs> Typical <laughs> lieutenant, right? <laughs> you know, and, uh, but I didn't fire my weapon, uh, didn't have to, uh, didn't cross the line of departure, which they really, we just went into Kuwait from Saudi Arabia, basically, and they routed them, and within 24, 48 hours, everybody was back. Uh, so... That was, but to be over there, the family separation is, so what you learn is you don't care what happens to you. You know, you, I'm fine. I'm going to go to heaven, meet my maker. Uh, but who's going to take care of my kids? Mm -hmm. Who's going to take care of my wife? And my, I remember my wife driving me to the airport because we didn't know Saddam Hussein, the fourth largest army in the world. She's driving me down to, with the rest of the Marines, and tears were just streaming down her face because uh, it was very real. But we were okay. Oh, that's so. wonderful. Now, of course, you've been in the State House for several years now. I, I had spoken time, so 96 to 202. Right. And at 202, I was a young buck. I said, I'm going to run for Congress. And I ran against Patsy Mink, and she passed away, and I lost to her. I was one of four people in U.S. history to lose to a deceased person. So I guess I got in Guinness Book of World Records. But everything happens for a reason. And if, if I didn't lose... 
I wouldn't have adopted those children. Uh -huh. And I can tell you that those children have brought me more joy and fulfillment than anything else in the world could have. Uh, a career in Congress, whatever, it doesn't matter. The people are real as opposed to temporal titles that we, we exchange. Bob, the State House has been your home, your, your, now, work, yeah. your work home. Yeah. And uh, what are you learning there now? I mean, you're fighting oh. an uphill battle, obviously. <clears throat> what, what have you learned that makes you say, I want to continue to do this? Because it's difficult. Well, I don't want to continue in the State House. Okay. Uh, and, and, and the reason is, you know, it's funny, guys who were my adversary 20 years ago, uh, Marcus Oshiro, Calvin Say, the older fellows who are still there, Ken Ito, they're my friends now. Uh, uh, we're all older. We all have a similar worldview. They are more, they can't articulate it because they're Democrats, but I, I, I would suggest to you that a lot of their, uh, maybe not Calvin, but a lot of the other guys that are old timers, they're, they're out of step with the young 30 year old kids who, uh, believe in a lot of this social engineering and, and I'm, I'm very conservative when it comes to morality. Uh, I didn't, I was led to charge against same-sex marriage, uh, pono choices, social engineering, the undermining of parental rights. I'm very old-fashioned in that regard um, and uh, that has led people to call me names. That's okay. Big you know, homophobe hater. But, it's but, but what people don't know is in the course of my career, I hired two guys to work for me who were both homosexuals. One was a closet, one was an openly gay guy, who was my friend, and I hired him because he didn't have health insurance. This was before Obamacare. He came into work twice during the session. He was sick the rest of the time. He, he asked me to rehire him. I said, you know, I can't because I'm cheating the taxpayer. I, I got you six months of good insurance, but if, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't bring you back. He, he passed away. Uh, my wife, when we first got married in 1987, <coughs> we're sharing an apartment with her cousin. This is a funny story. George Hunter. And I go out to the living room and I said, what the heck, who's this chick out here? And I go to my wife and said, did George bring home some floozy? No, <laughs> that's Leilani. Leilani, Tommy, George's brother. Tommy lived with us. Tommy was a fafafini, which is a Simone term for transgender. This is before it's cool 30 years ago. Yeah. I'm living with a transgender because uh -huh. it's my wife's cousin. So that said, I'm very tolerant and open, but as when you bring in public policy, we're going to make decisions on what's best for Because see, now it, it, you have this moral chaos in the schools. What do we tell this kid? We, we passed sex education, sexuality education. It's a board of education policy starting in kindergarten. Kindergarten, give me a break. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the, the social engineers, the left, want to get in there and teach your children or your great grandchildren. <laughs> grandchildren, <laughs> just grandchildren. No great yet, thank you. Well, I got grandchildren. I, I got right. grandchildren. They want to teach your grandchildren uh, their views, but not yours views. Because by the time they get to middle school, they have their parents' views, right? And whatever your your children's views are your, par your the parents, mm -hmm. you're the parents. You may disagree with me, that's okay, but you're the parents. You raise your children the way you want to raise them. It's not Bob McDermott's job to raise your kids or inculcate them with my values, but by the same token, don't force your values on my kids, right? But you see, Bob, what you're doing right now is exactly what I want people to see about you, that you're very rational. You're not just a party politician. You're a person who well, believes party, you yeah. have your own values. And party hates me right now. <laughs> you know something? That's okay. Because if, if people have to change, and mm. I think parties have to change. We've seen changes in everything from, from computers and typewriters and, and, and phones to iPhones, and yet politics has stayed the same, extremely biased instead of looking at what is the national good, or in our case, the state good. And what people are starting to realize about you just from this simple conversation is we're opening their, well, my show, we're yeah. opening their minds, well, you know. He lived with a transgender, <laughs> what the heck's that about? <laughs> I can't, I, you know, I can't say that 
I agree with you <laughs> with everything that you're thinking because I have my own views. Of course. But I have to learn to respect those views and look at them as what is necessary for our children, not yeah. for us so, so much, but for our children to make sure they have a better life. Before you speak, yeah. we're going to have to take okay. a break. And we will be back in a minute with Bob McDermott, our State House Representative for EVA. This is Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's World. Um. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks, to community groups, to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here with Bob McDermott, our State House Representative for EVA. And if you were here for the first part of our show, you're starting to meet a very, very interesting politician who really believes that he is not so much a party man, he is a people man. He is one who wants to make the leadership of our state responsible for our children responsible for our grandchildren. The decisions we're making today are not necessary for what we have to look at for us, it's what we have to look at for our kids. So Bob, we're gonna continue our conversation and we're going to talk a little bit more about you, but I wanna show some photos. I okay. wanna show you and your family. I think we have a bunch that we can queue up. Oh my God. Oh, who's that handsome young man? That's Wait Desert Storm. Forget <laughs> the handsome, forget the handsome. Just who With the Elton over. John glasses. <laughs> I love it, I love it. 19, I guess that's Desert Storm, in Saudi Arabia somewhere wow. in uh, Interlands. Wow, let's see the next one. That's my family with my daughters-in-law. So my, the, the girl on the left is my Filipino daughter. You see she has her ultrasound photo. She, she's given birth to our son. Yeah. He's one year old now. Wow. Um, the holy girl in the middle uh, is my other daughter-in-law. She's pregnant in that photo, so she also gave birth. Uh, we have another son with her. And those are your boys in the back? Yeah, those are my boys in the back and in the front. And then... Uh, the big boy on the right is our son Joey, and that's his wife Manu, and their two children. They now have another child. So oh that, my God! That's so no wonder you have to keep working. You've got a <laughs> lot of people there. And this is just the immediate family. So you can imagine on the weekends the extended family, or for parties and such. So oh this is just. Oh my gosh! A, Let's see the next one. Yeah, that's my lovely wife Utu, thirty years. She's kept with you that long, but yes, she well, has. What a patient woman! <laughs> yeah, I'm still, I'm... still waiting, still waiting. Yeah, yeah, she wow, usually... that is terrific. I, I actually, she looks familiar to me. I don't know if I've seen her at a party somewhere or uh, uh, an event somewhere. Maybe. But, yeah. Wow. Let's see the next one. Oh, that's just a photo from. Uh piece of campaign stuff. Well, you know what's so interesting? If you look at what we're both wearing, we're yeah, both smile. wearing Make Them Smile oh, buttons, and there's a the smile right there, you know, yeah. which is cool. Let's see the next one. That's my wife again. Yeah. That's about four years ago, six yeah. years ago. That's uh, Navy League. There's Dave Livingston, Blangiardi, Tim Gard, and myself, a, a little portlier in those days, uh, uh, giving those two guys an award, because they... Those are two gentlemen, Gard and Blanchiardi, who give tirelessly back to the community, and they help sponsor these uh, Sailor of the Year luncheon for three years, four years straight, and that involves getting on the phone, as you know, and raising money. Uh, yeah. They're great guys. Yeah, and Dave, of course, was on our show. Uh, Dave's, mm -hmm. you can't keep up with Dave. doesn't sleep. I don't know if you know that. Uh, he is. Uh, four uh, hours a day. I know, I know. When I'm up at 4 a.m., my first email or phone call uh -huh. is usually Dave. He so we host. both share that 4 a.m. wake up. He was my boss at the Navy League for a couple years, and he was the hardest boss I ever had. No as, far, as far as demanding 
and driving for results. Dave, but at the same time, he's your biggest cheerleader. He loves you. Uh, he is one of the best friends I have. I don't have a lot of friends. You know, when you get married, your wife becomes your friend. Oh, yes, and, absolutely. And, and you really, your family, <clears throat> you're not hanging out a lot. He's, he's probably one of my best friends. You know, I hired Dave. Did he ever tell you that? No. I, yeah, I oh, was, yeah, yeah, the yeah, YMCA. I was on the, right. I was the chairman of the YMCA on Atkinson, and he applied for the position, and nobody wanted to hire him because he was a Howley guy from the mainland. And I said, look at his qualifications. Look at what this guy has done. Not so much from who he is, but what he's done for the Ys on the mainland. And I said, we've got to... We, the we rock take him. So, yeah, yeah, we he, took him on. He's in, in the... But he's been here ever since, Yeah. So well known. Well... For him to make that move, I would talk to him and said, you were like 40 years old. You decided yeah. Southern California was your whole life, and you came to Hawaii not knowing anybody. Uh, you should, uh, Pam says, well, you know, it's, it's easy for Dave to make friends. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely, and I know his yeah. wife very well, she too. It, it, just great people. Yeah. The Navy League. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, that's something you spent 12 years It was with. a blessing. It's, Tell us about it. Navy League, so it's a 501c3. Uh, my wife would say, what do you do? You're, you're always you're going to lunch with important people. Well, it's like a booster club for the sea services. Like Nakoa is for the UH football team. They do things that the school can't do for the team. The Navy League does things for the Coast Guard, Marine Corps, Navy, and Merchant Marine that they can't do for themselves. For instance, uh, awards banquets. They can give them an award, but it's m much better in a venue with the Pacific Fleet Commander giving an E-4 an award. That E-4 normally would never see or have any contact with a Pacific Fleet Commander. Here he's being handed an award and shaking his hand. So that's one of many things that we did. Uh, what is this one? Uh, this is the Fleet Reserve Association yeah, recognizing uh, some uh, Coast okay. Guard guys. Uh -huh. That's a Coastie on the left. That's J.J. Uh, Wynn. He's no longer in Hawaii, but he was head of the Fleet Reserve. And the fellow to the right is uh, Joe from USAA. I forgot his last name. But mm -hmm. So USAA, and, and the, we relied on our corporate partners, whether it's USAA or Matson or uh, <coughs> Bank of Hawaii, uh, That's wonderful. McCabe, Hamilton, and Rennie, um, ship, I forget the shipyard, uh, Fred Anawadi's group out. But you've in been involved in so many other things besides politics. Yeah, it's oh, well, and that wonderful. was great. The Navy League was great because you got to meet heroes. So you get to meet POWs, and like Jim Hickerson, and you get to know Jerry Coffey much better because they come to a lot of these events. And you get to become real friends with them. Mm -hmm. And you ask them, what was it like? Did you do this? Did you do that? over the course of several years, and you gain a much better appreciation. Um, Jim Hickerson was a POW for five and a half years. His wife now is Carol Hickerson. Uh, this is a Hollywood story. She, her husband was a helicopter pilot and was shot down So in 65. So for seven years, and she was pregnant when he was shot down. Hmm. So for seven years, she, he's listed as MIA. So she leads this campaign in Southern California with Sybil Stockdale. They start the National League of Families. She meets John Wayne. John Wayne wore her husband's bracelet. Mm -hmm. Every year, John Wayne, John Wayne <laughs> sent her son a Christmas gift. Wow. Um, comes the end of the war, they revise his status from MIA to KIA. She goes to the Cotton Bowl where... Uh, just to, to edify, that's uh, MIA is missing in action, yeah. KIA is killed in killed action. Killed in action. Right. So for seven and a half years, she was with Sybil Stockdale trying to raise awareness of the POW. Ross Perot invites her to the Cotton Bowl where all the POWs, they do Welcome Home with Tony Orlando or singing Tie Yellow Ribbon Around the Yellow Tree. Standing next to her, a guy she met casually before, was Jim Hickerson, whose wife had left him while he was in prison. Oh. She begins to cry. He kisses her on the cheek. The rest is history. Oh. Hollywood couldn't write a story like yeah, that. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, speaking of Hollywood, one of the kids who designed a poster for her when, it, when they were doing fundraising was a kid named James Cameron from the high school down the road, right? Yeah. Santa Barbara High School. So James Cameron's now a famous director. Of course. Yeah. So it, there's these stories, and you meet these people, and you have the photographs, and you help, and you, then you get to honor them. And so for Carol and Jim, we honored them with uh, Secretary of Navy Public Service medals and things of that nature. They, she was never recognized. 
uh, just recently, the Vietnam celebration, they brought up on stage and Anne Margaret helped present the award. So she that was neat. Yeah. Bob, I think, you know, what's important is, is making people realize that uh, the side of Bob McDermott that's out there uh, uh, pushing for economic issues, pu pushing for educational issues, pushing for the things that are important for your community. This is the real you. This is not no. somebody that's just a politician. This is the Bob McDermott no. that has a family with eight children that lives in the area that's working very, very hard to make yeah. things happen. You know, you should be, I gotta hire you to be my promoter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. I just love that I, you I, know, you're, you're, you're so real compared I, to a lot of the other guys I, that are I, out there. I go to Ever Beach, right, in Campbell High School, and I look around and I say, holy smokes. I'm like, there's like three white people out here, and I'm one of them. You know, all the kids look like my kids. Um, and I'm con my wife will tell you this, but the, the family photo, all those kids, and that's, you know, it's a campaign photo, and I'm like photo bombing at the white guy in the back. That tells local people, well, somebody can stand the son of a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he may not be us, but I think he gets it. You know? I, I, I would like you to know that I find, well, when I do my Holocaust lectures uh, around the state, and when I go to the Eva side, and I lecture that at Campbell, and that was one of the best, best responses I've ever really? gotten. I had kids who wrote me back after the lecture telling me how wonderful it was and how, how much they learned about it. And I have to tell you, Bob, I do 50 or 60 of these a year, and that school must have sent me 100, so 100 responses. We so now let's go back to 1987, 88. We have another common friend that I just figured out. Yeah, I guess he's passed away, obviously. Uh, Rabbi Julius Nodell. Of course. He of was. Course. He taught me a couple classes, and I really enjoyed it. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, I got to ask him some pointed spiritual questions, and I and I appreciated his answers. He was a Holocaust survivor, yes, right? He, he was. and his wife, and he yeah. donated a whole his whole library to Shamran. Yes, yes, correct. He yeah. he was the biggest. He had the biggest reform synagogue in St. Louis, right? And then or he moved out here to moved out to, here to, to for Temple Emmanuel, right. on, on the Pauley Highway. Yeah, he was a. You could tell he was a holy man. Whatever your religion is, you can yeah. tell this guy's a holy man. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's important for us to realize that uh, there are so many uh, uh, parts of the puzzle when we look at Bob McDermott and we're saying, wow, here he is, and I could see that that's part of you too. It's I'm important. a big BB fan. I don't know about you, but I'm a big BB Netanyahu fan. <laughs> you, know, it's, um, you know, that's not something we have time to get into here. But I do want to say that um, it has been an absolute pleasure to, to have you tell our audience uh, what the real Bob McDermott is about, because you don't have time in sound bites. No. Here, at least for a few minutes, we can chat, schmooze, we can yes. uh, you know, just basically learn a little bit more about the individual who I think has a real chance of helping this state. Well, you know, it, the election's gonna come down to leadership, and uh, whatever the issue is, building a new stadium or bringing these parties together, on the, the train is gonna be solved, but why did we have to wait four or five months you know, get these guys in a room, order pizza, get it done. Uh, we need a new stadium. I'd like to see Cahey Lagoon and Marina redeveloped and bring America's Cup yeah. here, and on and on and on. Well, it is, uh, if, if people want to reach you, Bob, can they reach you yeah. on, on your website? It's Representative just... McDermott at Gmail. All right, so that's Representative McDermott at gmail.com. Uh, I wish we had more time, Bob. Well, we can do it again. Thank you so much for coming, and I would like to do it again. Absolutely. If you could stand me. I oh, I enjoy it. We've got all these common friends now. <laughs> uh, I, I say thank you to Bob, and I say thank you to the staff at Think Tech Hawaii for making this production happen. Uh, welcome, and uh, say aloha from Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii.